It's like a tripod fish. Whiskers. It's not as high up as our tripod fish, but it's definitely a relative. Uh, get some lasers in the shot. Yeah. About 12, 13 centimeters. I love how it's they're classified as lizard fish and allies. 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 Hmm. They support the LGBTQ plus community. They're allies. Yep. Get it. So Sebastian, sea worm in Olelo, Hawaii is Koe Kai. Koe Kai. Kai meaning the ocean and Koe for worm. Huh. Ah, thank you. Makes sense. Thanks for asking. I did not know that word. <laughs> We're all learning. Yes. So Ooh. Koe Kai and Lalu? Lole. 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 Shrimp? What is ginormous. That? Ginormous. Yeah, shrimp. that was one of these larger red shrimps. That's ginormous. That is a big shrimp. It's on the bottom, it's not right in front of us. Oh, wow. Looks like it has some kind of appendage at the front. Let's kind of go in while you're moving. Go in. Yep. yep. I don't think we can get much better than this. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That is a big shrimp. Large red shrimp. Jumbo. Thank you. Yep. No push. Is that possibly some pyrite, Hannah? The top? Pyrite? Pyrite, no. Not pyrite. Um, pumice? Pumice. <laughs> Maybe. I was like, we're not going to see that down I here. was like, <laughs> I was like, how the hell, oh, how the heck can you see pyrite in the manganese? They <laughs> <laughs> have very us. good highs, Hannah. Turns out the marine biologist on his geology. <laughs> so you really, you got me right there. That was funny. Pyrite is one of my favorite oh, minerals. Oh, Chris Kelly is here. Um, he thinks that the shrimp is Aristopsis Edward, Edward Sina. Siana. I like Siana. the Edward part. <laughs> Edward Siana. Edward. I can remember that. The Edward shrimp. I'm very happy that scientific names are interpretive in their speaking. Or else I would do very bad at them. Thanks, Chris. Coming up on our first spot, mm -hmm. Derek? Yeah. Right. Hannah, how's this for, well, I think we can find some rock here. Really huh? now? Yes. Are, are we kind of yeah. stopped with the ship? I think, uh, right? I mean, there's nothing magical about this spot. Uh, no, I, I know, but it's just we're 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 gonna hold, we're not be in a move if we're gonna do a core, right? Oh, and there's a coral right here too. Okay. Core, all sediment core. Um, yeah, let's do. Let's grab a rock first, and then we can. Yeah, I'm looking at these. Bridge nap. There's also these. All stop, please. This one might be good too, but yeah. So you think of those two right in front? Um, Where? Right These? under the lasers? Yeah. Yeah, one of those is good All too. Right. I like this one better. Dealer's choice. Okay. Wait, I want to try this. Oh, OK. 
Ooh, what's that? <laughs> I'm still very upset I don't get the fancy screen. <laughs> I, I showed you how to use that. Uh, control and four. No, don't tell him. Uh. <laughs> So does that need to be logged in through the OSD? Yeah, so log in. Ah. A little push. Let's go Puhaku. So which sample is this, Sebastian? This will be sample 80. Okay. There we go. It's a little thin. Yeah, this is not one of, this no. is not a good one. Not a good one? Okay. All right. Please I back. think, I think poorly. It. I've just crumbled. Sorry, Puhaku. Oh, whoops. The one right next to it then. I think this one. These are flat. Yeah. They, they must broke be broken off a, from a sheet flow. I was just about to say that. Too thin can, as well? Oh, or? Yeah. Well, can you bring it a little closer or? Down yes. lights. Down lights. Ta-da. Thank you. Yeah, these are, these are really flat. I'm going to have to. S we can find other ones. Yeah. That's what everybody says. Sorry. Thank you, though. But this one. Okay. You just need to make sure this that it's fell. not like massive. Yeah. Or else we're gonna have a situation like sample Can 68 again. Yeah. yeah. Just pull it downhill and then get a grip. Yeah. Oh, that's that's too big. Too big. I would not yeah. feel like carrying that thing around. That's big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've collected bigger, but you know. <laughs> well, we also have to worry about cutting it. Yeah. With the rock saw. Yeah. I'm I'm not strong enough. Um, to carry that should thing. we pick up and try and find a different spot? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Puhaku. I'm wide. Yeah, so Rennie was also saying that like a lot of the later waypoints up along the ridge are kind of just like bouncing along the the, the summits. Oh. So like there's not like an urgency to get all the way through. So you know yeah. we're we're not in a in a major rush. We can take our time doing this stuff. Okay, good. Yay. Yeah, I think the coral that we saw, by the way, which I'm not sure anyone's really interested in hearing about, is Isididae lepidicis species. Because it has the, r the red centers. Mm -hmm. That looks like it. Is the ship still moving? Right? No. 
think it's just residual swing. And it was how's any of this look? I mean, we could just do a sediment core somewhere and then do a rock somewhere else. Yeah. If, if they all seem like just not great. Well, I just, I guess kind of, I feel bad if like we stop and then it just turns out like last time. But Don't feel bad. We're just exploring. Okay. Okay. Because wherever we stop, we'll do a sediment core. So just okay. we'll pick a spot that okay. might have rock too, and we'll give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. Like here? Yeah. I, I, it, it was just hard for me to tell how big they are. Yeah. Because these, these would also. Yeah, let's stop here, guys. I think cool. a, a combination. Let's do the core first, and then we can poke around the rocks. Yeah. Does that work? Sure. And yeah, yeah I mean, this is going to be, we'll just, we may only have like, a couple centimeters of sediment, yeah, like we'll just, we'll just any see. Any of these would be perfect if they're not flat. <laughs> well, that one's definitely not flat. Yeah, so that one would be a good one. So which one in for us, the rock or the pish core? Uh, let's do pish, well, we're just, we're looking right at the rocks. Let's do the rocks first. Wh you want to do the middle one first? Mm-hmm, please. Middle rock first, please. Copy that, Jake. Oh, rock first. Rock first. I oh, sorry, so. if you're already getting a core. No, that's all right. I thought you said core first. I did, core. but then we're oh. looking right at the rock she wants, so figured <laughs> may as well. All right. Yeah, I looked at Brown. I was like, uh, I don't think. I, I didn't you. even see that he had the arm already going back there. I just heard core first, and then no, you straight for it. Yeah, no, you're correct. I had said that. The one on the lasers, or to the left? Of uh, one? this one. Yep. All right. Because we know it's not flat. Yes. It's a little bigger than I think. Is it attached? Oh my gosh. Really? Oh my gosh. What's it attached to? The I don't ocean. know. <laughs> I don't know. Just, just let it be. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, oh. wait. Oh, we got oh, it. Or is it just that huge? Huge. Ew. <laughs> 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 yeah, bigger than. It's, it's not flat. <laughs> hey, I was just going to say it's not flat. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want this one? No. Like, it's way wait, too big. I want to see it though. Okay, we'll take a look at it. We'll take some observations. <laughs> oh my gosh! If, if this wasn't, I would want it. If it wasn't as big as it was. That's pretty oh funny. Oh my gosh! It's beautiful. <laughs> I'll take some pictures for you for later observation. Thank you. I wonder how hard it would be to equip a manip with a rock saw. Well, if we've. Um, there's actually been some some attempts at that. So when we were working at Santorini, mm -hmm. um, Steve Carey would really wanted to get samples of rock that was you know attached to this, the the mountain and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and Brendan Phillips tried to, I think they they had some some things going on where they're trying to get a rock hammer, but like no matter what we did, we couldn't keep the ROV still. Like it just, yeah. You know, you're pushing against something, you, you move the ROV. It's just what it was not. We did it. It's just really tough to thing. do. Uh, Could you try this one? Yep. Please. I think Thank Tito you. was out there where we use the ROV to do drilling. Really? Yep. Wow. That was crazy. I did not expect. <laughs> he pulled hard. <laughs> oh, 
Another one. Same. Yeah. That one doesn't. That, that looks okay. Uh, it's smaller than the other one. That's. This one looks old. This one looks. Would that qualify as a Williams grip there, Ed? Uh, yeah. No, it's a little too good. It's very <laughs> flat on the on that side. Oh, well, maybe it is a Williams. If the object moves around, What's it's a Williams, Williams. grip. Uh, it's where you just barely are holding on to something. And who's it's it about named to after? Fall. Gee, I have no idea. Oh, okay. That was Ooh. someone you knew. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not going to out the person. Is this, a, is this oh, a, okay. a yay or a nay? Um, I don't know. The flat, like the bottom, it's so weird. It's up to you. We can find a different one if you want. Okay, we'll do that because this looks like a high low class. It is also kind of big. Yeah. So we're having the opposite problem. Let's go with wrong rock number two. Oh. The, these look flat over here. Yeah, they do. We just have gotten really unlucky. <laughs> Next time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because there was that one that was like right there, but now I'm like, it might be too big. You can give it a shot, though. <laughs> okay. Let's give this one a shot here. Which one? Uh, to the left of the one, first one we picked up. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. We used to have the telly showing up right in front of the pilot, but um, some people were putting um, unhelpful icons up there, so got relegated to the top screen. Mm. Whatever, it's fine. Oh, I'm to get a little closer. Yeah. yeah, what about this one? Yeah. Or th that one looks like it could be on the surface. It's probably the biggest rock we've yet tried to pick up. Oh my gosh. Think positive. <laughs> okay, I catch myself thinking negatively. I'm like, oh gosh. So I think thinking negatively just stops you from jinxing it. If you hope too much, it jinxes it. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on, really? <laughs> mm. oh. They're all like buried in sediment. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's all moving downhill. Okay, wait. That's maybe okay. decent. It's smaller. It's not flat. I like it. Yeah, this is good. I like it a lot. That's better. Can we get some of the lasers on it so we can get a size estimation? Yeah, let me uh, do a little push for you, too. Thank you. Like right there? I All like right. it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, coming out. Good. Third time's the charm. Full or fourth, fourth Fifth. time. Fifth time's the charm. <laughs> Thank you all uh, for being so patient. You need the box me. open? Um, dealer's choice in the box. Um, ideally A through D. Uh, sample. And sample number 80. Um, yes. Let's go this camera while you're doing that. Dead sponge. Thank you guys for being patient with the, the rock choices. So today's, is today Tuesday? Tuesday. Today's okay. actual Tuesday. Tuesday the 19th. I have no idea what day it was. All right.
I always say that every day at sea feels like a Tuesday, but then actual Tuesday yeah. comes along and throws you off a little. That's sample number 80 in box Sandwich A. Can leave it out for a push core or bring it in? Oh, I bring it in. It's easier to get it when it's in. Confirmation for box A. Um, which box did that go in, Jake? A. Okay. Alpha. Yep. Thank you. Alpha. All right, that was a good wreck. So, yeah. Um, Wherever you think a core is the easiest, I mean, we really don't know what the depth is. But uh, really anywhere around here, we'll just see how we do. I'm betting you hit rock. <laughs> I'm guessing you'll hit rock at some point. If nothing else, it's good practice for Jake. Just give me a second before you start. Oh, okay. Got to get things all put in there. Yeah, yeah, no worries. All right, now we can start. We're still we're still grabbing the, the tube. Nice. I'm thinking like right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a good choice. disturbed. Yeah. And that's it. No? No. Oh, is that it? If we can't get in further, it might be wise to move an area of less rocks around it. That implies that there's less rocks to be buried. That's about as far as it's going to go. All right. Um, <laughs> I could sh shake it out yeah. over here. Yeah, I just shake it out. Shake it out. Stop. I didn't say it. Oh, you. <laughs> I was baiting you know, her. It's crazy that you thought of it faster than I did. <laughs> no, he thought of it first. I don't know if you can see that or not over there. Ah, oh, crap. It's already stuck in my head. Ah. <laughs> her power. <laughs> <laughs> I will grant you that is a power she has to get annoying Next songs stuck in my know, head. Next thing you know, Mike's going to be bedazzling his Nautilus shirt. That's not happening. <laughs> Bejewel. <laughs> Bejewel is how it is? Well, whatever. It's when he walks good. in the room, he'll shimmer. Yeah. yeah, you got the gist of it. <laughs> um, it so I, I don't know that anything, here. we're kind of on this. I think we got to move. All right. yeah, yeah, I think the um, best thing to do is probably just to start moving towards this slope that we're going to get to. And if we see a spot that's like particularly sedimenty without rocks, we'll maybe pause again. All right, I will stow the core. Yes, please. Thanks. If Justin's awake yet, what time is it? Justin. Low? Oh. Go back to the sample solo. Sample, I. Oh, you put it away? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't have Bejeweled stuck in my head. <laughs> it's an okay song. It's better than Taylor Swift songs. I didn't even know that was a song of hers. It's new. It's okay. Oh, well. New being like a year old. Less than a year old. <laughs> yeah. 
I was just giving an estimate. <laughs> if you want, I can be exactly to the day. I would like you to carbon date it, please. <laughs> I, I'm not going to carbon date I don't even need to. You back around? You used uranium, too. Yep, back around. No, I don't need to carbon date it, though. We can carbon date Taylor Swift. I don't want to do that. I'm sure there's a song I can quote. Well. Just need to look at this, the discography. You know, sometimes <laughs> I have to remind myself that you like Cornelia Street so I don't get upset with you. You kids, knock it off or I'll turn this ROV around <laughs> right now. Did you figure out the uh, Lana Del Rey song you're talking about? Lana Del Rey? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I knew what song it was. I oh, just wanted to make but sure. But does she reference it? Yes, oh, she, she does. does. I need to look it up. What's the song called? <laughs> I can't say it. Oh. oh no, say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Venice oh. Beach. But she does an inversion of it on purpose, but it is referencing, if you go to Genius Lyrics. Never heard of Genius Lyrics, but I'm sure most of the things I listen to, it would just, it just crash the site. Genius Lyrics is just, um, like where lyrics are and people can comment on what they think it means. Or the artist has previously said what it means and they just take note of that. Who's the sediment sample for? Great question. That is a fantastic question. I know what it's for, I don't know who it's for. Let me see. I'm just wondering if we want to keep spending time on it or move on. No, we're going to move on. And we're moving on. It is for Elva Escobar and Jurgen Pollerspock. If I can pronounce that correctly. It's German. So do we want to move at 0 0.3 again? Y yeah, uh, but we will want to maybe slow down when we get to the steeper part, but that's up to you guys. Bridge snap. Could we please track a line at bearing two, four, five at zero point three knots? Two, four, five. Thank you. All right, what did I miss? I think I saw rock sampling. Yeah, we got a rock sample, and we tried to push core, but only got like, you know, an inch in, so we didn't oh. collect it. Yeah, and the giant squid popped in to say hi real quick. Yeah, it was like, hello. Yeah, then left. Away. Really? Yep. Um, <laughs> in Hercules' view or Atalanta? <laughs> Y'all are terrible. <laughs> Y'all are lying to me right now. Okay, I was about to say. Yeah, if it was a giant squid, I think we'd be making far more of a ruckus. I was looking and I was watching and showing um, the live stream during the interaction, I was about to say, I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, you blinked. I think I'd seen another acorn worm at the very beginning. Yep. Of where yeah. I left. There's the still plenty of their patterns on the seafloor. You that? can see it all UFO over. UFO urchin. Sea urchin. Oh, yeah. Also, you missed our trials and tribulations of trying to pick a rock. Oh yeah, we had to pick up like five different rocks to find one that, that Hannah was happy with. Well, they were all massive. Like, yeah, they were massive. Yeah. massive. I saw like the one before <laughs> the one maybe you took, I this don't know. This is funny. Jake's like, this attaches something then. <laughs> oh, I have this giant rock. It was beautiful though. <laughs> yeah. All of them were beautiful. I got it out all though. All the Puhakus were beautiful. Puhaku. It's like rock Jenga. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first two that we tried at the first location were like too flat. Come for that semicircle. Yep. Yeah. Semicircle. 
It looks interesting. Yeah, suspect man made, but I don't know. Oh, are you? Looks like half of a Burger King crowd. Oh, I think it's a can. Like a tin, rusted tin can. Boom. All right, Found resume. It. Got that push core. Is <laughs> <laughs> it the sediment set all? It's definitely man made. Oh. There's a shrimp in it. Rusted can with shrimp. All right. 1960s Coke bottle. That's my guess. The glass was it with rust though. It stays for a long time. That area to the front over there looks like it could be a nice spot for a sediment core. What do you think, Mike? I think I think we're going to hit a lot of rock uh, still. It just isn't as as sedimenty as I thought it might be. So I think we can move on. Yeah. kind of flows are we looking at from I can't based on like what's sticking out this is all probably fall like debris from from above i don't think we're these are actual flows yet and if there are actual flows it's probably covered by the sediment mm -hmm. but i believe in the debris it's probably a mix of all three <laughs> i believe in the debris i believe in I have the faith debris. in it I believe that the debris oh. is I composed see. of sheet, pillow, and low bait. Just because we picked up a few rocks that were like pancake thin, which could symbolize that it came off of a sheet. So yeah, so this is just debris from probably all three of the types of flows. on the sponge yesterday that like looked like whiskers mm -hmm. is that is that normal for them to be like that for the attached team horse yeah yeah okay they kind of use like at fish hooks okay so something gets trapped in it and they pull it to the main body yeah that was really cool i would never have seen that there's a lot of material in the water column that's because we've been tinkering around yeah i think that's us We've been stirring up a lot of sediment. You can tell because you can see all the tracks of the little organisms in the sediment, which tells that there's not a lot of sedimentation here. So besides acorn worms, what might be making those tracks? Sea cucumbers? Sure. Sea cucumbers, definitely can it. Um, worms, there are lots of macrofauna living in the sediment that can stir things up. Uh, but what is this? Crinoid? Doesn't look like a crinoid. I'm leaning more towards a coral. Then there's this black fish right here in front of us. Yeah. Might be hydroid. Go for zoom. Going in. Yeah. Quick focus and coming out. That looks like a hydroid to me. Coming out. Hydroid. Lasers. Lasers. Lasers, thank you. Black coral. Oh, Lights. black coral. Thanks, Chris.
of a sea cucumber in the back. Oh. I love Buddy, that color. the sediment is down there. What's You're that on a rock. squat? Oh, there's a, yeah, there's a right. white squat. Just chilling. White squat lobsters? Yeah, right there. What? Looking for an associate. <laughs> He's not too far. He's like a law firm, uh, an early law firm. Right. Still needs an associate. Trisopathies. Soon to be trisopathies and associates. Well, the black coral was attorneys at law. You may be entitled to settlement. Sediment. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's good. Oh, sorry. No, that was a really good follow-up. Well, it has red eyes. Uh, yeah, that is creepy looking. We should is a, is an albino. It could be. This looks like a, a crawfish. I was about to say I didn't know that they could look like this. Is this like a yeah? Common? Those those uh, pinchers don't look uh, squat lobstery to me. Or at least Chris I says seen it's this. a. Moonidopsis. Thanks, Chris. No, that's the squat. That's not this. Yeah. Moonidopsis is the squat lobster, which is not this. This is just possibly. Well, it does look kind of like a squat lobster. Trisopathies. Oh. Trisopathies is the black coral we just saw. A little more if that oh. helps with your ID. That's a full zoom. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That's a good zoom. Is that got like one large horn at the top of the shell? The rostrum? Yep. Give it a second low, but I don't think that Chris will beat us to it. Yeah, it is um, what Chris said. Oh, okay. Never doubt the Chris. No, I, w I was misreading. The time I didn't see the timestamps on it. It was back a little ways when I was reading. It's beautiful. No, I was, I just read up too far into the previous comments, and it, I, I don't know. I, I, don't yeah. know I don't know species. Chris is saying well it's enough. absolutely a yeah. small lobster. <laughs> no, no that, kidding. Yeah, that wasn't his uh, his fault. That was me just reading back too far. I don't know that I've ever seen one that's white like that. That's that white. That's cool. That's cool. The thing is, we always see them in the corals, so we don't always get a good look at their morphology completely. True, yeah. It looked like the the shell was thicker on that on that one than a lot of the ones I've seen. Imagine if any of these dead sponges were on a rock that just like tumbled. That'd be so sad. Probably happens. They thought they had the good life. They picked the wrong rock. There's definitely um, a Taylor Swift lyric somewhere in there. Chris saying there's a lot of white species of um, squat lobster. Uh, you actually see a lot of them around whale falls. Oh, that's cool. We were seeing white squats yesterday on corals. Yep, we did. Resisting the urge to make a Star Wars quote. The sand quote? Yep. <laughs> so coarse. I'm not sure any of this is sand. Sediment is 
mostly sand. No, most most sediment is uh, muds, clays, and organic matter. Sand is interpretive. No, sand is a specific geolo geological size. Are we bringing pea size into this? Huh? Pea size. Pea size? Phi. A P H I. The phi scale. Just now looking at Atalanta's camera, and I kind of forgot how steep this incline Yeah, this is that pretty, and it's going to get steeper. Well, Fisco does not help with sand, but it does help with clay. Another big shrimp. Yeah, most sediment is composed of either so sand, silt, or clay. Uh, but but oh, sand is usually sand is usually only a major component oh, um, near continents because it's it's eroded um, quartz and that sort of stuff. The deep sea sediments are usually uh, silt and clay. According to the fee size, sand is anywhere from two millimeters in size to 0 0.01 millimeters in size as any form of rock. Yeah, sounds about right. So yes, sand. No. Have you measured the grain size of this? No, but I'm willing to bet that somewhere in that range. If I had to bet, Don't it would think probably so. be silt or clay. True. Just based off of the Stuff that we find inside of the rocks. I'm um, just picking fights, pick fights. <laughs> I think I think it's clay to silt. And if it's silt, I would say well, oh, there's there you probably find a very fine. Who's playing with their headset? You know? <laughs> Thank you. You know what would solve this? A the doctorate? Core. I'm telling. Okay. I like my answer better. We've got some questions coming in from some middle school students, and they're wondering about how much does all of the equipment cost and how much oh does. Oh boy. <laughs> it costs to keep the ship up and running and I know we talked about that I think the other day Mike I don't remember when that was like a daily yeah. estimate so. too much <laughs> uh, it's an expensive hobby that's for sure uh, a lot of these vessels you can roughly roughly estimate the daily operating cost between 40 and 80 thousand dollars US a day uh -huh. um, yeah, it depends a lot on, on the staffing and, and what sort of operations. Are they providing an ROV? Are they providing yeah. a vessel? Are they providing the personnel? Cucumber. But uh, yeah, we just I would just take this chance to thank our uh, NOAA Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute uh, that's uh, that's funding this expedition. Uh, I was on a vessel once that now it doesn't have to do this often. But we uh, did an activity that fills the uh, fuel tanks. It's called bunkering. And we took on 220,000 gallons of diesel fuel. So if you're middle school students, you're probably able to have your teacher or help you find out how much one gallon of diesel fuel goes for. And. Uh, That'll put you in the ballpark of what it costs to fill the tank. Then we take on about seven pallets of food mm -hmm. uh, for every expedition. And a pallet's probably about six, seven feet tall.
and there's uh, just about 50 people, 50 to 60 people, most vessels. We've got how many, like 49 right now? On this I think 49 on this one. So it all varies. So don't have a easy answer to the question and the like the remotely operated vehicle that gets updated and new components get swapped out all the time so it's very hard to keep a running tab on uh, what it cost Do you think we should take a Niska down here, or do we should, we should wait till we're up top and then it's sparse? I'm not sure about that. Um, I mean, it would. I don't know that down here would give us the background because it's it, a submarine it's, canyon. It's, it's, it's so far down, it wouldn't necessarily be the same composition of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say wait till we get to the top. But if if anybody on our science chat. Thanks to Niskan down here would be helpful. They can let us know. Oh, yeah, and earlier we were mentioning how many uh, folks we have like on board the ship currently, but we also have scientists ashore that uh, contribute so much during these expeditions. So we have some people in our science chat right now that are helping send in some identifications and help us make decisions about our dives. So we've got, I guess, max 50 people. Is that correct? Maximum number of people that could be aboard the vessel? Uh, 52, I think. 50. 52, uh, what's well 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 18? And is 54. that based on 54. safety? 54, yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, lifeboats for 108 people, 54 on each side of the vessel. So you can only have up to that number, but I think OET likes to keep it a little bit lower, so we have the ability to move people around state rooms, etc. I think they go for 52. We have, I think, four nine right now. So I know we've got at least one classroom watching with us right now, but I wanted to just mention that for any educators that we have, um, it does not have to be even like a traditional school setting. Um, we offer ship to shore interactions for any kind of event or venue. This could be libraries, community events, where you can speak one-on-one -on -one with our crew and get a chance to learn a little bit more about what's going on and ask some questions. So in about like, 30 minutes, I'm about to hop on another ship to shore interaction, actually this time with my own students. Oh, that's cool. Yes, this will be the last of my classes, and then tomorrow we'll have an interaction with our entire school. Oh, wow. Ooh, we'll nice. Ooh. Mahina's going to help me, and I think the plan is teachers will be joining the Google Meets from their classes, like all students will be in homeroom. How many students yeah. total? Um, we have like right about a thousand. Oh, students. wow. That's big. Um, and what, what time's that at? Oh, gosh. Um, like turning around to look. It's, it's early. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah. it's early. Like um, before our watch? I think so. We're 
maybe during, but I know tomorrow we'll be finished with this dive, like before our four to eight watch, won't we? Um, if we, it's 24 if hours. If it's 24 hours, we'll recover right then, yeah. yeah. I'm so not it, sure. It might the... be during our watch, and I might just be up anyways. Cool. I'll check when I go back in there and see. But yeah, it should be a good time. But yes, any educators we have on here, those interactions are amazing. So um, fun to watch students be curious and ask questions. And um, we also have so many educational resources available on nautiluslive.org. Um, and that's also where you will find out information about how to sign up. And those resources are amazing. I pull things from there all the time for my students and we have so much fun. And we have fun just watching the live stream and watching highlights, but it's really added so much to our curriculum and it's a good Ooh. time. Jelly. Ooh, someone's asking us about if we found any um, items of human origin, like any evidence of people sometimes down we here in the We just tent. saw yeah. a can. <gasps> What is, is this a jelly of some kind? I've never seen this before. Oh, into the camera. Yep, sure was. I don't know if I even got it. Yeah, I don't think so. I, oh. Dang it. I got highlight. You did? Yes. Oh, thank God. I was too that slow. That was quick though. Uh, but back to the question, yes. we, we did sorry. get, we did see a little, no, that's right. We did see a little fishing net on a, on some corals here and there, but it wasn't uh, anything major. Um, this, you know, this area is probably used to be fished. It's now a protected marine monument. Um, but we haven't seen, you know, large amounts of, at least in the areas that we've been exploring, we haven't seen a lot, uh, large amounts of fishing gear, that sort of thing, which is good to see. Yeah, we had just come across, what well, did we say that was, a can? Yeah, like a rusted can. And that's that's not, you know, that big of an impact. It can't, like aluminum cans and glass bottles and that sort of thing, they're they're pretty inert or, or deteriorate quickly, or cans will deteriorate qu quickly, so it's not really harmful. It's the sort of, you know, plastics that are mm -hmm. that are much more impactful on, uh, on the deep sea and the shallow sea. Especially that uh, plastic fishing net. That stuff doesn't deteriorate at all and can just ca catch stuff and keep it. Oh, there's a fish. Right yep. tail? I think so. Has a very bulbous shaped head. Well, there's a current indicator. Go for zoom if you want. I'm gonna try that. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I didn't like it. Try to swim away into the sediment. Bonk. Right. He's like, I can't go that way. No. Angry, right. angry, <laughs> angry, <laughs> angry, <laughs> angry, angry, <laughs> angry swim. All right, bye, buddy. <laughs> Hope you find your dad. Oh, shrimp. White right, shrimp. You. How's the speed working for you? Great. Was it point two, point three? Point three right now. Okay. That's fine. Can change to point two once we get. Yeah, if there's any steeper slope. I love yeah. Trying to guess if two. the lines are from currents or from little creatures. I think it's from little creatures. Like bioturbation. Yeah. And with such, so low many. with such low sedimentation, it would take a while for those to be erased. Inconthomus or matis?
And is this what you were expecting to see in this area? Yes. Absolutely. I was actually expecting it to be more uh, like deeper mud. But yeah, slumping rocks make sense too. that we're not seeing any nodules. Well, I think it might, this area is probably um, disturbed too much. That's hard. I, 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 it's hard to picture it being disturbed with all like, I mean, I guess the sediment, like I'm constantly seeing tracks in it. So. No, I mean like rocks shifting downhill. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how often that happens. Alright, you miss anything? Are you gone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a little jelly. There's the bear print again. Yeah, more bear prints. <laughs> yeah, more. There's another bear walking around here. Bigfoot. OMG. This whole time, I thought. <laughs> I thought we were going this way. Uh. <laughs> I was so confused. Okay. Sorry, it's just a little early for me. And plus my huge water bottle is blocking waypoint two it's out a of my very, vision. Yeah, it's a very large water bottle. Yeah. But I see it now. I see oh, it. That's good. And well, I what's understand. What's that? Two <laughs> holothorians? Or Can we get a zoom on the long one? Or is the way too high? Uh. <laughs> Tito, can you bring your heading to the left just a little bit? Well, that one's full of sediment. Well. All right, over zoom. Yeah. Oh, I dusted it. Oh, I love the light purple. This one looks to be a large uh, species that can probably swim because it has the extra frills. Thank you. Come out. Oh, that one moved. Take off. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Paleopathy, patidase, is was the longer sea cucumber. Not sure I've seen one of those before. And we've seen a couple of that shorter one so far in this dive, yeah? Oh, yeah. And then, oh, is that coral bamboo right there? Yeah. Yeah, the other ones look like they're like chunkier.
Ah, ah. Is this a puhi? Puhi. Eo? Not pau. Go for zoom. Go on in. Hold it. Wow. This one's pretty. You know, just a little bit. Yep. Holding. Wow. This is a Holoceridae genus. That one has really pretty, like, little under frills. Might be the lighting. It's almost got a transparent head. Mm -hmm. Chris says it's specifically Aldrovania affinis. They go out of frame. Thank yep. you. Coming out. Pull wide. Thank you. A push. We've got some high school students wondering what's the scariest thing that y'all have seen down here. Uh, that winch tension reading 2000. <laughs> Picnagonid. That is a good question. Wait, what'd you say, Derek? Picnagonid. Sea spider. Oh, the sea spider. I think, Hannah, I think you're muted, but Hannah said the same thing. So the, yes, the sea spider was the scariest thing. Yeah, I would agree. Probably, it wasn't super scary to me, but it'd certainly be a little bit creepy like if that was a massive size like on a, on like godzilla scale that'd be <laughs> terrifying absolutely terrifying i don't know for me it's scary there's been some like spooky areas where it's just like i don't know yeah i agree a lot More of like dead sponges dead corals So Malia, earlier we were talking about trash and like uh, signs of human impacts down here in the deep, but we didn't mention anything about um, some of the trash and like the plastic that accumulates within the monument, like near the atolls and um, some of the work that's being done about that. Yeah, so um, we're not too far away from uh, Holani yeah. Po, which that is like, yeah. known yeah. as Kure steeper. Atong, where there's a lot of surface marine debris that gets caught up on the on the uh, beaches there so you know even though we're one of the most isolated archipelagos in the world human impacts are prevalent on these very um, pristine islands and atolls so you know that's one of the big challenges um, in managing Kapahanamukwakia is getting people out there to clean up you know, because, you know, there's so many effects at marine debris. A lot of it is um, derelict fishing gear, which means like these huge nets, you know, just heavy, heavy, heavy sitting on the coral reefs and smothering them. Um, entanglement issues, you know, with the um, endemic um, and threatened and rare animals that make their home there, like our Hawaiian monk seals and the green sea turtles. Um, and you know, for our viewers that may not know what endemic means, like I want to make sure we understand, like that means that these are species that we will never see like, anywhere, anywhere else. else. Yep, yeah, yeah. And you know, when you think about like how small these populations are, um, it really makes us really consider like what are we doing that's impacting the the animals that make their home here. Right. So yeah, marine debris, a huge problem. And a lot of that that accumulates um, within the monument, especially around uh, those reefs, like it's uh, marine debris that has come to this area based on like the currents and the gyres yes. that are out here. So it's yeah. not necessarily- From Hawaii. Yes. Mostly it's from elsewhere. So, you know, the current just kind of moves in between the North American continent and Asia. And um, unfortunately, our islands tend to be those areas where the, the, the currents will bring them right in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are, you know, we don't want to blame because we're all guilty, um, humans everywhere, of, of, you know, using 
plastic and continuing to consume and support corporations that create these single use and other types of plastic. I mean, plastic can be good. It's good in medical technology, you know, but the single use and just the proliferation oh, big of plastic is problematic. Mm -hmm. And as humans, we have that choice. We can make better choices. So I think once you see the impacts, when you see an animal entangled. Is that right there to the right of the laser? Is that just a rock? Or dying? Yeah. Um, that looks just this? like a rock. It's a rock. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A rock. thanks. Sorry. That's <laughs> OK. That urgent's huge. And when we say marine it's birds nice debris, as I think that term is a little confusing for some people. It's just trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of trash. And, and you know, and some of it comes from the shore where where it's either washed off or dumped off of of shore, but but a lot of it comes from vessels as well, um, stuff that's dumped overboard or, or lost during fishing activities, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'd say all the, over. the vast majority though comes to the ocean from rivers, where it's just like trash along the river in the river, it gets washed out to sea. Yeah. Yeah, you that's know, another source. You know, all these sources of it being on landfills, on land, and then it gets washed down yeah. into the ocean as well, yeah? So it's not just marine um, sourced, but it comes from the land as well. I haven't seen Good it point here point. in Hawaii, but I've seen it in the Gulf of Mexico. You see uh, cans that have logos that were last used 60 to 75 years ago. Wow. And they're just there almost for lifetimes generations well when you think about like plastic it never goes away it never will go away it'll just biodegrade and turn into microplastics and which is you know we're finding in human bodies mm -hmm. and babies you know nursing mothers are feeding their babies microplastics yeah that's really scary so it's the problem is huge yeah. there was a recent study done at uri on the sediment in rhode island in the in the bays and they found that, um, or they, they estimate now with this new paper that there's about two tons of microplastics in the sediments of in just Narragansett Bay. Oh wow. Littered across just from the out, outflow of the rivers and all the tributaries that flow into the bay, collecting the plastics at the, in, the, in the bottom. Yeah, and if you eat fish or any kind of seafood, you're eating microplastics. Well, it's yeah, we were talking about this um, the other day out, out on the deck, and, uh, like, apparently we're inhaling it, too. You know, we're talking microplastics, like, you know, microscopic, you would never see it, but, like, stuff that's on your clothes and what, you know, you're inhaling it as well. Does this look like a better push course spot above this? Uh, I don't think so. Seems like there's an accumulation there, but hard to tell how deep it is. Is that a rosella sponge on top, I think? Can we get a zoom? Yeah, let me get a little set up. Oh, out. All right, go for zoom. Oh, take a little bit to the right. Huh. Ah. I think the these are way. rosella sponges, right, Chris? It's on the top left, the bright spot there. This, yeah, this is a new species of Calophycus rosella sponge. I don't think we need to collect though. By new, you mean recently discovered? Or I think recently described. Described? Because he said the new species. Okay. It's quite tall. It does look like a rose. Yeah, recently described. Nice. I love seeing the old trails. Mm -hmm. I like seeing the new I like seeing the new trails being made. <laughs> like, what were they thinking <laughs> when making this? Yeah, why can't you just go in a straight line? Yeah. Silly. <laughs> it is funny. 
Oh, uh, they just, they, yeah, why are they changing directions? Like, is there what? attacking back and some forth reason? through the current? That's funny, I never thought of that. <laughs> Things don't is that our well, acorn room right there, or what is that? Uh, it looks pen? like a C pen. C pen? Yeah. Nice. If you think about it, if they finally find somewhere that has sediment that they want to process, it makes more sense to go back and forth while you're in that area than to can you going straight and eventually run out of that area. You know what I mean? It's like if we found a place to eat, we want to continue marching mm -hmm. in a straight line to get out of it. Well, it Mowing depends along. on the sort of grid, grid pattern you're going to do. Mowing along, yeah. They could be much more efficient, I think, and cover much more ground if they were to do a grid pattern instead of this meandering stuff. Yeah. I'd give it three million years. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted quickly to get back to the, the marine debris issue yeah. because I hate to leave people, like even the kids, you know, you bring in this really huge topic oh, and yeah. then you don't bring solutions. That I hate to do that to people because yeah. <laughs> you don't want them feeling like overwhelmed by it all. But there are things that we all can do, you know, individually and collectively. Um, and really like, like lobbying a lot of the corporations and holding them accountable for the plastics that they're creating and using, um, you know, in our own individual lives of choosing not to use. Think back, what, 50 years, 60 years before we were using so much plastic, what were we using before? Right. You know, just like what were our grandparents using? So there's ways that we can rethink and um, really like we have to, as consumers, need to make those choices and we've got to hold the, the people making the plastic accountable so whether that means suing using the law you know making our own individual choices um, buying in bulk you know there's mm -hmm. there's different ways that we can it could be as simple as going to the gas station and buying a paper bottle or metal bottle instead of plastic yeah mm -hmm. because yeah, um, stores will not continue to stock items that don't sell. Some states have deposits on cans and bottles that you pay when you purchase the product, and then you get that money back, five or 10 cents per can or bottle, when you return it to a collection point. Uh, I know Oregon's been pretty aggressive in that. Yeah, or things like um, bringing reusable bags or reusable cups yeah. to places. Um, I, I, mm -hmm. I hate buying bottled water. It's just, I don't it really do it. irritates me. No. I mean, sometimes you have to at an airport or whatever, if, but... No. Um, just bring a bottle yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I have been, but sometimes yeah. you forget. Um, I think it's it's interesting that, you know, we invented plastic bags because we wanted to save the trees and not use paper bags, yep. and now it's... Many coffee shops will also allow you to bring your own mug, and you can... Yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of stopped mm -hmm. with COVID, unfortunately. I think it's back. I've, I've it? done it. I've done okay. it. I think at some places, ago, it's fine. For those who drink beer, oh, you can, can take in your own on this container jelly? and get beer. For get the growlers. Yeah. I was going to say earlier, I heard both Jake and Derek mention, like, rivers. That's cool. Yeah. Can I get a zoom on this jelly, please? We can try it from closer. here. I can get it from here. I don't want to blow it out. All right. I think we're just getting ID zoom. Nice. Pretty, pretty looking one. Is it? I think. Yeah, that's good, right in there. Look, might look similar to one of our target species, not that we can grab it. I have no idea. I'll just see a bunch of pictures of it. Good idea. Very long clear right. tackles. Colorful jelly. I'm about to have to hop off again for another ship to shore, but I was going to say that um, I appreciate y'all bringing up rivers and just kind of reminding us how, you know, we're all connected all right, to the ocean, out. even right. if we're Thank you. not necessarily work. Just living. Just doing it on the fly. Okay, oh, I can get right here. Too close. Close by, and Mui, I appreciate you just bringing up those solutions and kind of giving our viewers some ideas about um, solutions. And yell to the right. And okay. it can feel very and overwhelming. and. I'll say two, like... Fish right there. Fish? Yep. I think... I enjoy looking along with the Papahanaumokuakea uh, 
Marine Debut Project, mm -hmm. like their Instagram, they post and uh, show exactly how they're going in and cleaning up a lot of, of those, uh, uh, specifically those nets, mm -hmm. those derelict fishing nets. So definitely check them out and kind of get inspired about some of the work that they're doing. Cool. And oh. Yeah. There's a big coral on the rock. Big or sponge. sponge. Sponge, yeah. I saw it in the still cam. I couldn't quite see it. Yep, we can make a difference. Yeah. You know, we just got to choose to. You want to slow down more? Okay, okay. I'm hopping off. I'm going to get back, back. Out front. This is, this is fun. Have fun. Unless they want to sample or do anything like that. So steep. Yeah, this is quite steep. Yep. So. And this would be hard on the ankles. Not too steep. Coming up, Tito. Yeah, that was just a large plectilid sponge vase. Cool. Is the jelly, is that pololia? Pololia, yes. Pololia. Polo. Pololia. P-O-L-O-L-I-A. OK. I thought there was an Okina in there somewhere. No Polo Okina. <laughs> Looks like an almost vertical cliff here. Yeah. yeah. Give us some perspective here. Sponge tucked in. Yeah. Found a stable enough place to live. That little How far away are we from the cliff face? About we five are meters, that. right here. Five meters. Yeah, looking right here, about five meters. Cool. Yeah, we're about 120 meters from where it gets to that ridge where it'll be less steep. Missed the opportunity for the sediment core bed school. Oh, the that's a pretty sponge. It's a big one. Perfect landing spot as well. Mm hmm. No takers. No takers. Okay. Moving on. Oh, um, Chris is asking for a Zoom now. <laughs> All right, it's got to be quick. He's on a Do you want me to stop? five to 10 second delay, so. And what is up in Argus right now? Something small, I think. Chris says he likes to mess with the pilots. <laughs> All right, go for Zoom. Going in. Uh, low focus, coming out. I'll stop, please. It was very intricate. It looks like a... a, chandel a chandelier bee. to me. Oh. Dale Chihuly. Like yep, Dale Chihuly. Looks like the, an emperor. Uh, if we're going to sample, I think you should back up. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to sample? I don't know. Are we going to sample? Um, I don't see indication that we are. Chris is typing. All right. <coughs> no need to sample. No need to sample. No need. That. Continuing on. Thank you. Elevator going up. Yeah. Just like on Sekuliak. Bridge nap. Could please track a line bearing two four five at zero point one knot. I 
have to start the what? Jet pump. <laughs> Just for awareness, folks, the jet pump is off for a second and just getting That's restarted. Right. Uh, okay. Ship still in DP though, all the station? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not something they shut off every time we stop. No, it's, uh, it just so. kind of goes to idle, but sometimes they have to power cycle it for some reason. I think the term power cycling is really funny because it actually is just turn things, turn something off and turn it back on, but it makes it sound more technical. Wait, you know, when the first Mars probe landed, it didn't respond to any commands at all, and so they turned it off and turned it back on. So I figured. Oh no! It's it, yeah, it works really well. It's, it's good just, enough for NASA. Yeah. I just think the term power cycling yeah. is, sounds more technical than it really is. You know what else sounds uh, really technical and uh, works well? Like we're having a, we're not getting a signal we're supposed to get from something. What's that? Uh, and we'll determine that it's an ONOFF problem, um, which means it was turned off. It's uh, an on-off problem. ONOFF problem. Yeah. 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 Um, air yeah. gap attenuation? Yeah. Yep. It's not, not plugged Sorry, all the way in. Uh, it's a common problem we face. Um, yeah. There's also a lot of user errors, which I like to call faulty headphone separators, <laughs> or uh, peb caps, the other one. The problem exists between keyboard and chair. So they're not, it's not on it yet, so we're drifting a little bit on DP. Yeah, so I figured we'd, if we lost jet pump, we'd be drifting. As long wow. as we're not drifting towards the wall, it's OK. That's so cool. Uh, I don't think we are. <laughs> well, we are slowly, okay. so just switch up as you need to. Yep, coming up. Yeah, now this is a cliff face. It'd be fun to climb if it were in the air. Yeah. Lots of lots of good footholds. I would so love to touch it. Oh yeah, look at that. That is so cool. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh seems like we're drifting. Beautiful. Jake, have you I'm been to the Rhode Island Rock Chip? Atalanta's light. Um, I out. have not. That's on my list of things to do yeah, this winter. It's, it's a pretty good one. Oh. Is that yeah. a snailfish? I know a lot of people who go. Yeah. I used to go like once a week. That looks like a snailfish. Go to where? That's over in uh, Whalers. I mean, uh, it's like uh, North Cranston, I think. Something oh, like North that. Cranston. Oh, there's a new spot in uh, Wake Wakefield. That was it. Oh, really? Oh, called cool. Rock Spot. And it's right next to the Whalers Brewery. Oh, um, Jess Calblin worked at one of those places. Oh. Jess at uh, Interspace Center. Also a uh, Nautilus video engineer. Okay. Yeah, we're just drifting. Yep. With the current. Things that happen. Yeah, sometimes it can take a couple of minutes for them to regain DP. It takes some time for the jet pumps to Turn on and fire up. Do you know why it quits on it like that? What? Do you know why it conks out like that? I, I don't know. I've never, I've never delved that deep into the problem. 1968. 1968? Mm-hmm. Is that? That's your Nautilus first one to see. Is that how deep the problem goes? Well, hopefully the jet pumps are more recent. <laughs> Over some interesting terrain. Yep. I'm up about 70 meters in the last few minutes. Can I get a zoom on this guy? Sure.
go for zoom. Going in. Quick focus. Is that a mushroom coral next to it? Yeah, it's a retracted We're mushroom coral. towards it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to blow me all off. Yep, coming out. Can I get a look at the base real quick? Full wide. For the yeah. coral. Bamboo. Is it? I can see the stripes. I see it right. Chris Kelly thinks it's a primnoid. Oh. Yeah, it's a primnoid. I don't see any stripes. Knocked a piece off. Well, I tried. A plus effort. Thank you. I had I had effort there. I thought normally I was seeing something that wasn't huh? there. Does it normally take this long? Yeah. Nothing we can do, just stay on the bottom as long as you can. And if what it gets hairy, come up. What are we waiting on? The ship lost DP. Oh, okay. Oh. Jet pumps, so we're just kind of drifting with the current. Gotcha. So we're coming off of yep. this, okay. our current path. Roger that. Looks like the Chris Kelly's in. encouraging you to keep trying. <laughs> just keep trying. Just keep swimming. Thank you. <laughs> Fish. Fish. Another one straight ahead, lasers. Well, way off in the distance. Yep. Into the abyss. I think I hear it fired back up. Yeah, they're taking control back. Nice. Even heading up. Go ahead, Bridge. Thank you. Ship is on DP again. When? We'll do, uh, if you could track a line bearing 235 at 0 0.1 knots. 235. Thank you. I've been seeing this very thin whip right here in front of us. Do you mind zooming in on that? I've been seeing some of those, but they're super thin. Yeah, there's two of them. There's one on the left, one on the right. Oh, this I'm looks like it could tether. be a chrysogorgid. Yeah, I've been keeping it a little tight. Gonna have to be a zoom from here for now. Yep. Now let's see what I can get. Maybe enough for an ID. That's uh, a full zoom. There's some focus. Some yeah, definitely Christ right. ordered to me by there going go. let Chris get the final say on this. Now I get a little bit closer. Okay. And grab it again. Shh. So creeping in. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Chrysogor did. Great. Thank you. So Sebastian, we had a viewer asking, what are those particles that they're uh, seeing floating in the water column? Yeah, um, that is marine snow. So pretty much it's all organic particles coming from the surface, um, usually through food waste, uh, detritus, and um, excretions. Most of it still has carbon and nutrition that many animals at the steps can reprocess to get more energy from. So there are a lot of animals in here that solely rely on them. So by organic, you mean like cells from other biology? Um, usually, yes, yeah, cells or processed cells or digested cells or car just plain carbon is usually the proper term. 
So like ph phytoplankton, zooplankton up above? Yep. So normally the sediments wouldn't be disturbed. Uh, I'm thinking like because we're here in this environment, we're kind of disturbing those kind of surface, um, I mean the bottom sediments. Mm -hmm. Normally, is there not that much disturbance on the seafloor? Um, sea usually in deep sea environments, they are um, low disturbance levels. They don't see disturbance events that often. Um, when they do, it takes them a little bit to recover. Um, that's why they can be very sensitive to operations down here, especially trawling can really disturb an environment up to upwards of 30 years, depending on the area. I can't get, I cannot get over how steep this is. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm kind of surprised there's not more corals. What is that thing? What is this orange guy? Is that? We saw one of those yesterday. Is that? Here. Oh, is that spiders? It's a crab. Coming out. It's it looks like one like of those sea spiders. It looks a little bit like sea spider, but it doesn't look like completely to me. Oh, oh body's too big. It's too big. It doesn't this have the like proboscis. This one has claws. It's like a big shrimp. Oh, but then we have Steve in the chat now. Good morning, Good Steve. Good morning, Steve. He thinks that it's a pergurid hermit crab, but he has no idea what's in the water column. He thinks it may have fell off the vehicle, perhaps. Well, we didn't put it on the vehicle. Could have climbed down somewhere. Yeah. Maybe when we were trying to take a sediment core. Hitchhiker. Chris agrees. Pagurid hermit crab. So are we back on DP now? Yes. Okay, cool. And we're moving up to waypoint two. Yep, roger that. Wow. I thought it was gonna take us way longer to get I did too actually. I didn't think we were gonna, I didn't think we get, were up gonna get up here our watch. Up, up the the slope. Yeah. It'll be perfect for Val. It's always interesting how in the last 10 minutes of your watch, uh, all of your focus goes from being able to identify any possible organism or geology in the footage to the slightest hint that that door at the back of the van is opening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything you identify is something related to food. Right. That piece of spaghetti right there. Cheeto sponge. Cinnamon roll. Cinnamon roll. The cinnamon rolls are so good. Oh. <laughs> Let's not get her started. You started it. Uh, She's sorry. slowly waking up back here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it looks better with the backscatter generator turned off. Feels like winter when it's on, though. 
Yeah. Well, it'll be November when I get back to Rhode Island. Oh, wow. yeah. Just it's about be snow cold. time. Feel like ripping <laughs> yeah, I'm not here. Actually, even way further south. I think like two degrees south of the equator. Uh, November and December. Except last year we had almost no snow. Until we did. <laughs> <laughs> did that huge storm. Yeah. That right February. Right at the end, yeah. End of the season. We were up in Canada on a ski trip. It was awesome. Fresh powder at J Peak. Though, the air temperature. Yeah. Wind chill. You, uh, I think that was the same weekend I went skiing. So Ups cold. Upstate New York, yeah. I've never we, been that cold. We went out sledding that night and it was negative 30 wind chill. And you'd go outside and your your face, like, with the sweat would just freeze to your face. Is oh that cold? Gosh. You know what's funny is the whole terrible. time, I think we lived in Alaska for five years, never heard wind chill mentioned once up there. That is odd. Yeah, it is odd. Mm. That's because whether it's minus 75 or minus 70, or feels like minus 78, it's still cold. Yeah. <laughs> minus 20 and minus 30, there's not a lot of difference yeah. between those. It's like, if the wind's blowing, wind's not blowing, it's still pretty cold. Well, we only, I was in Anchorage, which is pretty mild, so you only got yeah. minus 30 for maybe 10 days oh. of winter. <laughs> still sounds pretty awful. I've never been in temperatures that low. It's like, it's that cold, you drop your car key, it's like, well, we gotta buy another car. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, that's it. Time yeah. to go shopping for a car. And, uh, man, you better remember to plug your car in at night. Plug it in? Yeah, there's a heater in the oil pan. Oh, I see, yeah. The engine block warm. So that way, otherwise, uh, it has a really hard time moving when you yeah. try and start it. And further up north, especially up on the north slope, uh, most many vehicles just have an hour meter in there. Especially back then, there's the 90s when diesel cost nothing, and everybody had a 55 gallon tank. And you just don't turn turn your car off in the winter. Oh wow. Huh, amazing. Bad ping. That's a bad ping. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. How'd it get over there? It's not like we're, uh, I mean, we're uh, in the area of, uh, we're in Hawaii, but the water temperature here is probably fish in the water column. Two or three degrees Celsius. 34 degrees. Yes, yeah, yeah, fish. That's Where is it? Straight, straight ahead. ahead of the lasers. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I barely see it. Far yeah. away. I feel like a TIE fighter chasing its target. <laughs> yeah, stay on target. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> Almost yep. there. There you go. <laughs> that, uh, I think it's one of those anti Mora again. Maybe. Yeah, Wait till we get closer. Oh, it's going to come towards us. I think we're surrounded on all sides. Are these the ones with the uh, rotating eye socket? I think so. Yeah. Good. The first time I saw it, I was like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it looked at me. <laughs> That's a healthy size uh, specimen Over right zoom. there. Yeah. Holding right there. Oh, nice. It looks like a Simpsons character. We could get, uh, what's his name to voice it? Harry Shears? Schaefer. Schaefer? Thank you.
Kirk is surrounded. <laughs> then there's an enemy on the bottom right. Mm. Not an enemy, an urchin. urchin. All to the right. All to the left. I can think about is the climb by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> the climb. Yeah. Well, if there was an avalanche, it'd be wrecking ball. Let's well, yeah. see, like, only song I know by her, so I had to let's, say let's that. Let's see if, if you can get a Jolene oh. reference in there, too. Huh? Jolene. Yeah. Is that rock name Jolene? No. Never no. mind. Okay. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Yeah. I know that's by her, but I don't know. Miley Cyrus does Miley a great Cyrus cover of it. She does a cover. Yeah, that's her grandma. I mean, uh, godmother. It's Dolly Parton. <laughs> grandma. Oh. <laughs> Dolly Parton was also, she showed up on Hannah Montana as her, like, godmo godmother, too. That's funny. That's... One thing Dolly Parton has, like, thing to Miley Cyrus about was, like, showing her young fans, like, who she was because of Hannah Montana. And I was like, that's so, tr <clears throat> that's so true. Because at, like, seven or eight was when I was like, oh, okay, Dolly Parton. Ah. And I was like, thanks, Hannah Montana. Yeah. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Same fish or different one? Same fish. Just steadily creeping towards the wall. I feel like we just made a new friend. And we're just gonna swim to the top together. Our sonar looks like Alaska. Yeah. A little bit. Looks like a hat. Oh, With also flaps. That. I mean, Alaska obviously distorted by the sonar. Yeah. You really like seeing um, bodies of land in your sonar, don't you? Yeah. What are you gonna see? Hmm? What would you see? I don't know. A shape? That's no fun. A shape. You have to have fun with it. At least I said a hat. Nice Watch change of video. All right, everyone, time for watch change. Enjoy the next few hours of the dive. Eight to four. Eight to 12. Eight to 12. <laughs> <laughs> We're four to eight. Wait, I'm.
All right, where are we going? Yeah. Come at the end of the rope, anywho. So we don't have waypoints on here, huh? I can put them in there actually, let's see. So that's really dumb. You got to do all that stuff. Right? What do you mean? All the, you got to change columns and move yeah. things around and say which is the label. Yeah. So it's, you got to do exactly the same thing with Alvin. Yeah. So that means that the format's always the same. Uh -huh. And they put it in a format that you have to change every single time rather than make it really? in a format that you could use. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If only Aquaman was in charge of everything, <laughs> well, we I've would we would be much better I off. I think that's a pretty minor change that would save a lot of extra steps there for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds like it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the 8 to 12 watch coming at you from the deep sea. Thanks for all of our scientists ashore, all of our viewers online. We're excited in the van to be here, even if all of our systems <laughs> aren't quite up to... Well, we know who the guy is that writes the software, so... <laughs> oh. Robert knows the guy. Let's give him a call. And he's very stubborn. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> stubborn guy. Are you Imagine. the guy that writes it? <laughs> Are you sending in these anonymous compliments? That's why it will never change. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> Oh, it's good to be back with you all. <laughs> I miss you for those eight hours that I just have to go wander the ship alone. <laughs> <laughs> Were you doing some interactions this morning? Oh, I was loaded up. Got to talk with some amazing young ocean scientists in Virginia and in Georgia. And it was a true pleasure. That's so awesome. Thank you. Thank you all for letting me... Uh, teleport myself into into your world and for coming into ours on board the Nautilus, this deep sea realm mm -hmm. here in Papahanaumokuakea. We're on, I believe, our ninth dive now. Yeah. I'm definitely starting to lose track, but this is the Ala Amoana Kaiuli Expedition NA-154. You can find out all about it, nautiluslive.org, dot com, dot org. Oh boy, <laughs> I should know. Uh, dot org. Dot org. Lab <laughs> dot org. And uh, you can also read up on all of our core of exploration, uh, including this watch featured on the on the front page. You can watch live, multiple cameras. And uh, there's also education resources, so many cool things, amazing links to YouTube videos and blog posts just recently dropped about some of the really spectacular, humbling, life-changing experiences we've been having out here in these sacred waters in the Vault of Kua. Uh, yeah, just a pleasure to be here. This is Daniel Kinzer, Science Communication Fellow, call Honolulu on the island of Oahu home. And uh, love being here with the greatest watch of all time. Can I, th which way can I throw it? Can, can we introduce? Which Who wants to go next? Mahina left. Yeah, aloha kakai. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
My name is Mahinalani Kavaleri, and I'm from the island of Oahu. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, getting deeper into all of our dives, and we're just excited. We were able to launch ROV Hercules and Atalanta this morning around 4 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Um, we had another watch in, and we just switched over, so we're looking forward to the next four hours. Mahalo nui. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Val Finlayson, uh, the watch lead and uh, one of the uh, scientists on board. I'm a geologist, and uh, when I'm not on a ship, I'm uh, usually trying to uh, do a little geochemistry on rocks and uh, then uh, putting putting uh, the end result into mass spectrometers to uh, uh, get some uh, estimates of what sorts of uh, volcanic origins we're looking at here. So. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I also really enjoy being out at sea because we get to do all sorts of cool adventures like this. So, mm -hmm. all right. Good morning, all. Um, I am Virginia Beatty. I'm a PhD student at Florida State University. And uh, my current study focus is actually on deep sea ecology. So looking at the, the different patterns that we see among these deep sea organisms. I have, um, am, I'm focused on seamount communities, so working on some of the, you know, these, these features that are similar to what we're working on today. Um, and it's been a, I've had the privilege to work on seamounts within the south, southern emperor, northwestern Hawaiian Ridge. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today working on, uh, what are we on? Woolard Seamount with, with y'all. Ano e me ke aloha aloha kahi aka kako o Kukui no Maoio. Um, aloha everybody. Good morning. My name is Kukui. I come from the island of Maui. Um, I'm one of the data loggers on board, and I'm so stoked and humbled, and I'm grateful to be here with all of you folks here on board and on shore. And yeah, looking forward to an another spectacular dive in this really special place of Papahānaumokuākea. Mahalo. Mahalo. Front row, Catalina Del Mar. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Catalina, and I'm uh, serving as a navigator here, assisting the ROV team with uh, getting getting the ROVs around on these really awesome dives we've been having. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Still waking up. I'm uh, Robert Waters. <coughs> I'm sitting in a Herc seat, and I'm in charge of the complaint department. <laughs> <laughs> Because if somebody didn't do it, nobody would. Oh, <laughs> you're awesome. That's great. Um, Zach Gonzalez here at Atlanta seat. Uh, Robert's uh, right hand man. Um, Sitting on the left. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm left hand. <laughs> Dyslexic, or you want to call it today? But what is it called? Uh, it's called Tuesday. There you go. It's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we zoom in. Uh, just happy to be here and uh, join the crew and uh, my time out here. Oh, Puhi. Oh, gotta give her a minute. She's kind of oh, busy right now. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Amber. I'm a video engineer, uh, and bring, I'm the one that brings you to the zooms, even the maximum zooms. Um, and yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here with the greatest watch of all time. Right. <laughs> yes, ah. Uh, a teeny oh. little stock sponge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Amber. Yeah, wonderful shot you're getting right now. Yeah, this is definitely beautiful. a fitted fish. Um, I've. <clears throat> Uh, oh, and then a fit of form. It's got some scales on the lateral line, basically, and a very distinct face. Um, it looks like it's matching um, the befitted group in our um, benthic animal log. Um, and um, it's interesting because it looks like it's striped up against something. You can see. 
see there on its uh, on its side there. Yeah, but so the, I'm trying to take a bite out of it, didn't, didn't yeah. it? Well, I don't know. It could have just scratched up against some rocks, yeah, but true. it's got a very distinctive tail, fins, face, and then the, those extra scales. Um, so I do think this is a Bathididae. Yeah, I can um, see the whiskers, too. Diplocanthopoma, I think. Um, Hmm. Not sure if I can see the whiskers, but it, it should see, have some small um, right under pelvic the dorsal fin. fin or yeah. Side fin. Oh, yeah. Fin. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think those are, um, yeah, so that's pretty great. Awesome. We actually, I don't think we've seen one of these um, this trip. On this watch. That's true. <laughs> I, I personally have not seen one of these. <laughs> that's excellent. Great. Thank you so much. So we are on, uh, as Virginia mentioned, Woolard Seamount, uh, pretty close coming to the Northwest Hawaiian up. Ridge. Just coming up on waypoint two of our 24-hour uh, dive. We're at about 2,100 meters depth. So um, not, a, not a ton of corals to look at just yet, but we're kind of hopeful later.